everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. A while ago I was thinking why is it that all the games we have on the mainframe are, are character based. And obviously the mainframe by its very nature, especially when you connect uh, over a terminal, is character based and so that's not a big surprise. However, uh, there is no reason why we shouldn't have more advanced games and more advanced uh, technologies on the mainframe to do animation and to do interesting things, especially when you're uh, connecting to the mainframe over a browser or with a browser. A uh, browser obviously has far more advanced uh, rendering capabilities, especially if you use languages such as JavaScript. And so I sat down and I wrote this game that you're seeing on your screens right now. It's a breakout uh, version of the game or a version of the breakout game uh, something that you can play in any browser and um, uh, very simple game strategy you have to eliminate the bricks in as quickly a time as possible you have uh, special points if you hit the hamburger or if you hit the uh, hot dog the uh, house fly there is just there to uh, to distract you and uh, make things more complicated. And if you hit the uh, moving IBM symbol that shows up at uh, random intervals, you'll get uh, special points as well as a, as you see right there now on the screen, uh, a, a whole row will be eliminated from the bottom of the bricks. Uh, the, the goal of the game is to finish the game as quickly as possible with as many points as possible. To achieve that, I decided to write this game in pure JavaScript and HTML. However, I still needed uh, to have a web server and there are web servers, obviously several versions of web servers on ZOS. However, they're all extremely complicated to use and you need, uh, you need uh, to go through convolutions to use those web servers. So obviously the easiest way to, uh, to enable a very simple web server um, is uh, with uh, Go language and or any other language that can instantiate a simple web server. So I decided to do this in Go and uh, just as the web server and then HTML to serve the page and JavaScript, uh, which will then be rendering the game on the browser. By doing that, I can have this game be hosted on uh, ZOS or anywhere where uh, where there is a Go environment uh, or a web, uh, an easy to use web server with HTML and JavaScript. Let me show you a little bit how I wrote this uh, game. There's really not a lot to it. Um, so uh, if you go to this repository, Moshix uh, Break Web, that's the name of the game. Uh, there is somewhere here in the static directory you will see this is the very simple web server that enables it um, to host this uh, HTML page and the JavaScript on uh, on ZOS. And um, there's really only about what, 100 lines to it. Um, and then uh, the HTML page that the index page that hosts the game, again, very simple, just a black background. And then the game itself is all written in JavaScript. Uh, very simple game, really. There's only about, I want to say, maybe 900 lines. Well, 960 lines. And uh, it's all animation and, of course, with sound, um, which I disabled uh, just before so that it wouldn't uh, disturb uh, what we were talking about. But uh, there's, of course, also extensive uh, sound capabilities. So this is now in version 2.3.1 or so. Um, I've added uh, several capabilities along the way and I have many more ideas, but it's here. It's on the uh, GitHub repository and it works fine. Now, you could think that um, this is the end of it. There is a game and it runs on ZOS, but there is more to this. Now, Rob Prince, the maintainer of the TK5 distribution of MVS 3.8, has been very, very busy at work, uh, maintaining TK5 and adding more and more capabilities. If you've been following the mailing list, there's one interesting thing here, is that uh, there's a person called Mike Rayborn who uh, created a very capable 
and quite extraordinary web server for MVS uh, 3.8. Let's just remember for a moment that uh, MVS 3.8 was released uh, late 70s, around 78 or so. So it's almost 50 years old, uh, 40, what, 46 years old operating system. Obviously, there was no there was no TCP IP back then. There were no web servers. Uh, there were there was no network job entry capability for MVS 3.8. There was no Rex uh, capability for uh, MVS 3.8. And all these things have been added and more and many more over the last uh, 10, 15 years. So MVS 3.8 is alive and well, and uh, the amazing community around uh, MVS 3.8 and uh, VM 370, the enthusiast community around the mainframe is just, it's just mind-bendingly uh, good. <laughs> and uh, I can't say it any other way. I'm just amazed again and again at the creative uh, force and the creative spirit of the community that we have. And so um, Mike Rayborn, who is well known from having contributed many other uh, utilities and uh, enhancements to MVS, he created a web server. Now, if you go and download MVS TK5 update 8, there's going to be um, Mike Rayborn's amazing web server already included in, in it. And, um, and so uh, that already comes now with a very capable web server. I will speak a little bit more about how amazing this web server is because it's not just a simple web server. Oh no, it can do much, much more. And I'll show you in the next couple of minutes why I'm such a huge fan of this web server and why I worked from the very beginning of the first version of, uh, of this web server by Mike Rayborn. I worked with him on uh, asking him for some additional features and testing it with him. For instance, I asked him if he could uh, write a CGI interface for, uh, for his web server uh, to enable uh, Brex scripts or Rex scripts to act as CGIs, which he did. And, uh, and I tested it with him a couple of months ago. And then later on, uh, he also added other scripting capabilities. I think actually Lua may have been in there even before. Um, the Rex capability, or maybe after, I don't remember. But uh, there is there is several amazing features about this web server, and I'm going to show it to you now. All right, so we are here on, as you can see from the URL, we're connected to a TK5 instance with the standard uh, HTTP server or web server by Mike Rayborn installed on it and started obviously and we're connected here now if you go to the first page uh, you'll be served with this page which is what of course uh, Rob Prince put in there because he wants to uh, uh, link back to his own page but uh, if you go down here you'll see that there is lots of goodies here. So let's go, for instance, to the Jest 2 status. And what make Mike Rayborn did here is just simply amazing. It allows you to connect to your TK5, to, to your MVS 3.8 uh, mainframe, and check out uh, the status of your uh, jobs, either uh, spool jobs or executing jobs directly from the web browser. How amazing is that? It's not uh, It's not so easy to do that because the interfaces for MVS 3.8 to uh, expose JS2 uh, control blocks are very, very arcane and very complicated. I know it because I've, uh, I've worked on that myself, uh, not through a web interface, but I have been working on making uh, an SDSF kind of compatible uh, product using the Brex or Rex interpreter that we have in MVS 3.8. And I know how complicated these control blocks are. So just just this, being able to see uh, what's running, what's on your JS2 already is quite amazing. But uh, being able to see all that through a web interface on a 46-year-old operating system from 78, 1978, is just amazing to me. Uh, there is lots of things you can do with this. So it's able to do both dynamic. This web server is, uh, by Mike Rayborn is both able to do dynamic uh, web pages, uh, such as the one we just saw now, as well as uh, static web pages, uh, just the one we're looking at right now. So all this is already in 
um, MVSTK5. And I just want to make sure we can find Ray Bourne. His name is not even here, but uh, he, his name should be here. So that's the author of this web server. And, uh, and it's really quite an amazing uh, program that he's released here. And I want to show you a little bit more what's behind it. And then at the end, I'll show you how this all connects to the beginning of this video, which is the uh, browser game, the breakout game that I showed you at the very beginning. So let's look at the web server from behind the scenes from a terminal. As you can see, I'm connected here to the uh, front panel of, uh, of an S370 mainframe running the MVS 3.8 TK5 operating system. Here is the console and here's the panel. Uh, this is a fresh virgin copy of TK5. I have not made any modifications to it. The only thing is I started the mainframe, as you can see here, and then I started the HTTPD server by Mike Rayborn. Uh, by doing uh, a start HTTPD. Now, as you can see here, it's running. And, um, and this is just a fresh version of TK5. Let's log in and see what's going in there. So let's log in here. See you later is the password. Okay, so let's go find out what this HTTPD is all about. If you download TK5 Update 3, you have this uh, web server already installed. Uh, there is a couple of directors. Here's where the, your HTML pages go to. Um, here's where you can put your icons because obviously they need to be in binary mode. They can be in text mode. Um, and then you have the link lib, which is the executable. So you have here uh, the interface between HTTPD and JS2, as you can see, the one we just showed you before. Uh, we have the web server itself and some other help program. We can browse that. As you can see, it's an extensive program. It's written in C. And um, I'm seeing here something that I am really quite excited about. You see this here, this UFS INERD. Um, that stands, this UFS stands for Unix file system, and we'll get to that in a second, which, because that may be the most amazing feature of this all. Uh, so as I was mentioning, there is an interface to um, Rex, as well as to Lua, the scripting language that it may actually be even be older than Rex, I'm not sure, but very, very commonly used scripting language. Uh, Lua, I've used it quite a bit. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, and of course, Rex is also an interface that's supported. Now, uh, web pages are just stored like this. As you can see, this is pure HTML. Uh, this is the page that um, we saw before, and there is more to it. You can put any kind of HTML page here. I can call it Moshix, and if I, uh, if I write something in it, it will show up. Uh, we can do that if you want, but uh, I think we all understand we all understand uh, HTML quite well. So any HTML page that you put here, you can then um, well, you know maybe we'll just do a, a simple example. Uh, start Moshix. Oops. Moshix. Sorry. Um, and we say here, add this should be enough, maybe not. We'll see. Let's switch to the browser and let's say here, Moshix HTML. Yep, here it is. So as you can see, this worked. It's just it's just normal HTML. Let's go back to our terminal. And um, now there is two ways to interface with this web server. You can either have static pages, which will be here, and then you would have to link from page to page, or you can create dynamic uh, content through CGI that would involve creating uh, web pages with uh, Prex. Um, and uh, that works just fine. And in fact, I did debug that together with Mike Rayborn when, and I, I did uh, 
contribute the idea to him that he should create this uh, Rex CGI, which he did, and I'm very, very thankful to him for that. Um, and so that's the other type of CGI content. However, you can also create like real typical um, uh, dynamic content on this web server, uh, but you would need a file system that is able to find things and where you have full file names, which of course we don't have in MVS 3.8. There's some conversation going on already for a long time, especially between uh, my friend Matthew Wilson, from, um, who has a very, uh, very great, uh, very nice channel here on YouTube as well, um, Mainframes. Um, and um, where I say there is no real my, uh, file system on MVS, and he says there is. I say there's no real uh, dynamic allocation. You have to allocate in advance. You have to know more or less where the files are, whereas a real file system abstracts the, the disks uh, quite a lot from the end user. Anyway, whether we have a file system or not, it's up for debate. I say we haven't, we don't, but um, but uh, you would need a real file system where you can link to stuff and you can retrieve things uh, to be able to have something like the game that I showed at the beginning being served from the web server. However, Mike Rayborn has created just that. What he did is really just an amazing feat. Um, in, in the uh, web server that he created, there is the possibility to store things on a Unix file system. That's the UFS that I just mentioned before. So if we go um, and look at the documentation for this web server, here it is, we'll see that um, there is a Unix-like file system. Let me make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to read for you. Web servers like HPD and FTPD, so FTP servers, are most commonly used with Unix or Windows file systems to retrieve static documents. Uh, one of the early challenges with HPD was how to store static documents on a legacy MVS system that has no native hierarchical file system support. In fact, we only have partition data sets with an eight character member name restriction, which will make a lot of web applications very complicated because we, you know, Unix doesn't have the eight character limitation. Um, so he went down and what he did is he ported the Unix file system or he's emulating it in user space uh, inside the HTTP server and also creates a way to store uh, files on this file system by including an FTPD server. Uh, now there is already an FTP server in TK5 um, but that is to store files on the normal uh, disks managed by MVS. He, however, he needed to have a way to store things on the file system that he's, uh, that he's emulating. And so he, needed, he created his own FTP server that allows you to interact with the Unix file system that he created. All that is stored in a BDM dataset as a logical Unix block device. So, um, so that is completely transparent to the user, but we're able to put things there. And if we put them there, then the web server will know how to find them. So uh, in this video, what I want to do is take this game, which is really written for advanced Unix uh, uh, environments such as uh, Linux or Mac OS or Unix uh, system services on ZOS and make this game work on MVS 3.8, something so that we are able to play real modern browser-based games on MVS and I'm contributing this to MVS 3.8. Let's go about doing this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the repository with the game from my GitHub. So here it is. So if we go to break web, Oh, sorry, git clone. Okay, so I don't know what I was thinking. So break web, that's the repository. And as you can see here, we have everything we need to run this game. Now, uh, we don't have Go on MVS 3.8, but we don't need it because we have a web server. So we just uh, have the index page, which serves the game. And then we have the, um, the JavaScript 
uh, file which is the game so let's look at the index that should just work fine as it is on our on our mvs 3.8 web server so we don't need to do anything here and um, and then the game is in javascript which is running inside the browser anyway so um, we can this should be running also without any changes now the other advantage of storing this on the unix file system of uh, the mike rayborn uh, web server is that we don't have to worry about how long are the lines uh, some of the lines here are a bit longer as you can see than uh, 80 characters which would not fit in a normal record size 80 uh, pds or partition data set so that's the other advantage of uh, of uh, running this on the or storing this on the unix file server so you don't have to worry about line endings it's just it's just lines uh, finished by uh, by a new line just like any other unix so this is the great thing about it uh, so what we need to do is put all this on the unix file system through the web server that's running together with the uh, on, through the ftp server that's running together with the web server by Mike Rayborn on TK5. However, we cannot call this index HTML because there is already an index HTML page. So we're gonna just change this to move index to break out HTML. So this way the game uh, can be called just by calling breakout HTML. Obviously some of these assets here, uh, like the sound files, they need to be transferred as binaries and some uh, some other stuff needs to be transferred as text so basically uh, within with an ascii to epsidic translation so the, the the web server obviously is able to do both binary and uh, and ascii with the translation so we just have to put all these assets on the on the web server to do that uh, it's very simple so let's make sure we have the web server running again here it is. So the web server is running, which also includes the FTP server on port 8021. So we don't need to do anything here on the console. Let's just do this all from the uh, Linux terminal. So I just do FTP localhost 8021. Uh, and then I say herc01. See you later is the password. And now um, we can say first the binaries and put uh prompt off so it, and then we say input wave files wow that was fast input mp3 files that shouldn't be too many of them um, and i think that should be it and then uh, so now we have all this our uploaded as binary files the mosquito the start uh, the ball hit the um, and uh, the, the burger was hit and all those the house fly all those the ball is lost uh, the explosion when you hit the ibm logo all that is done now we need to just upload the ascii files or the text files making sure that uh, which are all the svgs because svg is just uh, if I take the housefly, that's just uh, a description in one line of the vectors that rendered the housefly. So th that is text. So let's do the SVGs, the HTML, as well as the JavaScript itself. So let's do that. Uh, FTP localhost 8021. Again, herc 01. See you later is the password. We say ASCII prompt off multiput svgs that's done the javascript file and the html file that really should be all there is um, can't think of anything else yep this should be about it so now we should have on the if you go and check on the web server um, see you later is the password yeah so it looks like um, 
it's all there. So you can see here, flying the game. The this index obviously belongs to the uh, to the pages that are delivered with the web server. So that's why we wanted to uh, call our game uh, breakout.html. So now it's already there. We don't even have to restart the web server. Let's go check if we can now connect to the web server and play the game. I don't know. I haven't tried this yet. Breakout.html. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this worked. So as you can see here, Q is to quit the game. R is to restart the game. Plus key is to speed up the ball. Uh, minus is to slow down the ball. If it de depending on the on the computer where your browser is installed, some computers render uh, JavaScript very very quickly, such as on the, uh, the recent M3 laptops by uh, uh, Apple. They render JavaScript extremely fast, and then some others do it slower. So you can adapt the ball speed by these two keys. Then P is to pause, obviously. And B is for the boss key. If your boss uh, walks uh, along your cubicle walls, you can quickly sh hit B. It will pause the game and it will show some uh, code on your screen. And then you hit hot dog burgers and IBM for more points. And this is all 2024 copyright by Hot Dog Studios. In other words, me. Uh, so yeah, this works fine. I don't know if you can hear the sound. I can speed up the ball a little bit. Oh, the boss is coming. Now we're looking at some uh, factorial calculation. They won't understand what we're doing anyway. Let's go back. And if we want to pause, we pause. If we want to restart, we just... Yeah, so restart the game and it restarts. If you hit the IBM logo while it moves, it will remove the bottom most row of bricks so that um, you finish the game faster. The goal of the game obviously is to f eliminate all the bricks with as many points as quickly as possible. That's why we have the timer here and uh, you can hear the score here and this is the ball speed is here. And we lost already. So this is, this is it. This is a game, a modern browser-based JavaScript game that is being served out of MVS 3.8. How amazing is that? I mean, I'm I'm really quite amazed uh, that this is all possible. And this wouldn't be possible if we didn't have the Unix file server that, uh, here is his name, Mike Rayborn has contributed, as well as the whole HTTP. Now, there is a slightly newer version of this web server, 3.14. Uh, I wish that... Um, the HTTP server would would indicate the version uh, when it starts up, but it doesn't really. Um, that's a, maybe a suggestion to Mike Rayborn, so we would know what's installed on it or not. However, there is a newer version of the HTTPD server called uh, version 3.1.4. That's the one that I know of. And, um, and Mike has made it uh, quite simple to install updated versions of the web server, even if you already have TK5 running. Now, what I'm going to show you now is uh, purely um, uh, up to you. You don't have to do it. As you, can, as you can see, it works just fine as TK5 Update 3 comes out of the box. But uh, there is a newer version and I want to go and install it because I think it has an updated uh, Lua interpreter as well as a, a better connection to Brex. So let's go and install it. So first of all, we stop the HTTPD server by just doing stop HTTPD. So the web server is down. Again, I wish it would show the version, but maybe uh, Mike Rayborn, if he's watching this video, will take it as a hint. I don't know, up to him. It's fine as it is. Um, and I have here in my directory, I have HTTPD 3.14 uh, already downloaded as a zip file. And we're going to go and install this. It's really quite simple. Where can you get the HTTPD uh, update? I will point to it in the description below this video. You can 
go and find it there. I put it on my repository just to make it uh, simple to find. However, it's also in the file section of the MVS um, uh, uh, user group that we have on groups.io, but it's a bit harder to find there. So I'll just put it in the repository if you want to install this version. If later on there's going to be a 3.15 or, or a 4.0, I'll put it there as well. But this is just to show you how you would typically install. It doesn't matter what version uh, of upgrade you want to install, just showing you what the process is to do that. So let's unzip this uh, star, this zip file, and it will create a directory called HTTPD314. Let's go in there. And there is a directory here. There is a, there is a file called install.jcl. So we have to upload this JCL somehow to the to MVS, and then there is a README. There's a README that explains how to install this. What is HTTPD? is a web page server that runs on legacy MVS 3.8J operating system. It can serve both static and dynamic web pages. So we saw that. Um, so it says if you want to upgrade. First, you need the appropriate HPD release built as a transmit file, um, XMIT extension, that you can upload to your MVS system using TN32 uh, emulator. And most TN32 emulators will have file transfer, as yes, we do. And then next, put in install JCL. So we need two files. Um, let's see where they are. Um, do we have an XMIT? Yeah, here it is. So HTTPD 3.14 transmit file and the install JCL. We need to put both of this up on the server. Uh, so for that, we can use the terminal. And we can go here and go to um, 6 utilities or command, entity so command. And now we say we want to um, upload something. So file transfer, continue, yes. Direction, send, uh, name of source file. So on this workstation, so it will be HPD314, I believe, install JCL. Name of destination, we want to put it in Hertz01, test, control, install. TSO environment, um, ASCII, good point, good question. Uh, remove, remap characters at um, default, destination block size, optional, destination file location type, app optional. Yeah, are we good to go? Yes, are we good to go? Oh, no such file. Okay, let's see where it is. That should be correct. Let's just copy the file where it's easier to find it for it. What is it called? HTTPD. Also here. So let's try again. Send. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Yes. Okay, so that's done. Now uh, let's upload the next one. So transfer, as you can see here. 279 kilobytes. Now let's also upload the transmit file. Send. So we're going to call it uh, http3.14.transmit and http3.14.xmit. DSO is fine. Now we need to do binary because it's a binary file. Um, not sure about the format. Let's make sure. 
that's fine, that's fine, PSO is fine, binary, we're going to do fixed, and it needs to be 80 bytes, and let's do 3200, mm. yep, this looks good. Okay, so the upload is complete. Let's go find those files. 314. Here it is. So we uploaded this, and this should be in binary format. Of course, it's a huge file. Yep. But uh, RevEdit knows how to open it, so that's all here. And now let's go look at uh, herc01 test cntl. Okay, so let's make this job ready to run. Herc01 install. I want this message class X. Um, so what it will do is it will execute the vSAM administration utility to delete the old um, HTTPD datasets, which includes the link library, Brex, if you have anything there, um, and the UFS disk. Of, so if we do this, um, if we install this, we will lose everything that's on the web server, the game that we already installed, but we, that's easy to install again. And then it sets the uh, condition code to zero, just in case they were not present before. Then we need to receive, so we need to put in here HTTPD 314 xmit. And then um, it will install it. As you can see here, there is Lua. I think that's the one, that's the version that also includes the Lua um, uh, interpreter. So you can also write web pages or CGIs in Lua or in Rex, up to you. So this looks all good. I think we can just let it run. Job 001, <laughs> the very first job. So let's see what the console says here. Uh, job one was executed, and so we should be able to find it in our um, in our uh, just to output queue. Let's go there. And here it is, uh, 320 records or so lines. And return code zero, and uh, yeah, that's all zeros. It installed it again. Looks like everything went fine. So first it deleted what was there, and then it installed it again. So now if you go to uh, 3.4 and type HTTPD, we should see yeah, there's some um, Examples, I think I actually wrote this example. Yeah. Yes, this is an example. Yeah, that's from me actually. I wrote this at the very beginning when uh, Mike Rayborn and I were working on debugging uh, the Rex interface for for um, H his web server. I wrote this um, so it, it will tell you who are the TSO users that are logged in. We can try it out in a second, but this, I think, uh, pretty sure. I'm actually, I know it's it's for me. And this is not for me, and, but this is for me for sure also. Anyway, just some uh, examples on how to write Rex scripts. You can write a whole complicated web page. You can get any kind of MVS control block uh, from Rex here and write amazing web pages. One of the projects I'm working on, in fact, is to have a full monitoring suite uh, that runs over the web server. As you know, we have this um, monitor uh, here for, uh, for the perf uh, performance monitor for MVS. And this is great, but again, you need to connect with 3270, which is fine. But I'm writing, I'm in the process of writing a performance monitor for MVS, which is going to be running in the browser so people can connect and see what's going on. Um, so, uh, as uh, over the next few months, I will be showing some videos about that here on this channel. So, uh, the new web server is installed now. Let's see if it works, and for that, we need to start it. 
start HTTPD. Maybe it will show the version now. Yes. So as you can see, it's a bit different now. It shows the version. Uh, is It is a, a APF authorized, so it's running with higher authority. And, um, and everything is fine. Obviously, our game will be gone now. So if we go to the game, um, that will not be here anymore. Well, it's still cached because we have the JavaScript cached. But if I do this, there's no breakout found because we just deleted the whole Unix file system uh, disk, uh, virtual disk. And so we have to upload it again. So, But this also gives us the opportunity to do, uh, I think, was it Brex? Who? Or who? Dot who dot rex. I don't remember anymore how to call the rex scripts. Uh, I was debugging this a few months ago. I think it's uh, possibly rex who. No, I'll find out later how to do it, but there's a way to call those. But anyway, let's go and uh, put the game back up on the server. Um, so for that, we go again. Uh, to the repository that I have here. And we do again localhost 21. So we need to upload as binary all the binary files like mp3, the WAV files, and everything else then as a uh, as a text file. Character01, see you later. Bin prompt off mp3 and the wave files so that's good then as ascii uh, we put and put html and put javascript and put svgs and that's it it's extremely fast uh, let's see max rates how fast this all went so i had 100 mips on my 2019 lenovo laptop i think um, that's fine um, so now let's go try to play the game again i think this is yeah this is running just fine so mvs breakout version 2.3.4 uh, that's running again out of this uh, amazing uh, web server. Let's see what's going on on the server while on the mainframe. So obviously very little is going on here in terms of MIPS because this is all served once to the browser and then the browser is playing the game. Uh, but it is, it is being served out of uh, this mainframe of this 1978 uh, MVS uh, version a 46 year old operating system that's running on a mainframe that is from the earlier 70s uh, i think this emulates a 3033 so this would be vintage uh, 1974 1975 or so and um, and we're serving a modern web game um, on uh, on this uh, on the browser from this mainframe now my boss is coming so let's switch quickly to pretend I'm doing some real work and uh, and see if we can win this game. We're lucky we got the ball in here behind the last row. So can we hit IBM here? I mean the logo of IBM. Maybe. I prefer the hamburger. It's all just satirical, obviously. The, I love IBM. Everything about IBM is great. Uh, there it is. Can we hit it? Uh, I think we're going to finish the game before the logo returns. Yep. All right. So, congrats. I finished the game. 116,000 points in 112 seconds. That's not a good performance, but uh, some people do much better. And that is it. So I will link in the video 
um, in the description below this video will uh, link to the repository where you can find the game as well as uh, to where you can find the update for the uh, web server which you don't really need as I showed at the beginning of this video but uh, if you want you can install it I also showed you how to install it and how to upload dynamic web pages it's really very very simple I love this web server I'm in awe of what Mike Rayborn has accomplished here and I hope he's watching this video and I want to thank you for uh, for what you have done because it's uh, it's an absolute feat. Uh, there's some people that have accomplished amazing things like just Mike Rayborn with his web server, um, Bob uh, Pullmanter with this uh, network job entry. Uh, uh, my, these are all friends of mine uh, then uh, Mike Grossman and Peter Jacobs in Germany with the Brex uh, interpreter um, and Rob Prince for putting all this all together and of course Jörg Winkelmann uh, um, who in Switzerland has put together TK4 for and maintained it for many years there would be no TK5 without TK4 and of course um, uh, my good friend uh, Jay um, who is the maintainer of the uh, of the Hercules uh, uh, emulator. So all amazing people, so many amazing people here. And uh, I want to thank all of you. And I hope you enjoy the game and I hope it's going to be included with uh, with the next version of uh, of TK5. If not, doesn't really matter because you can just go and get it from the from the GitHub page and upload it very simple. And, and uh, I hope you have fun playing uh, Breakout. And I want to thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button um, and uh, or the like button or both of them. <laughs> Up to you. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye.